Now call this meeting to reflect the plan for the order. First item on the agenda is approval of minutes, corrections, additions, and deletions. Do I have a motion to approve the minutes? I make a motion. It's been moved. Is there a second? Second. It's been moved and second. Any discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Motion carries. Next item on the agenda is discussion of possible approval of revisions of the preliminary plan for Windsor Bill Holmes on Rutledge Road. At this time, I'd like to recognize Eric Rufin, our planning director. Thank you, George. Good evening, everybody. Um, you, uh, the subdivision before you tonight is one that's been before us a couple times before, um, prior to our new faces on the planning board with us, I believe. Um, but in, in essence, uh, over between, uh, I think it was fall of 2020, probably, was the first phase, or the first uh, iteration of this came to you. And then a few months later, there had been a revision to the plat that was brought before you um, that basically uh, approved this subdivision as 90 units or 90 lots um, under the R2 zoning and three units an acre. Um, it's back before you tonight as a formality because, again, this board has oversight of preliminary plat review for major subdivisions. Um, we have another uh, small revision that's proposed that involves three additional lots on a little over half an acre that's being acquired, um, largely so that a corner, it looks like, uh, as the visual in your, in your packet show, the, to, to largely square off that, that corner there. Um, the density is still at the three units per acre as allowed by the R2 zoning district. Um, I don't have a lot to add to this. I can be happy to jump in as questions come up. I, there's not a lot more to say, but I do have the engineer, Will Louie, here from WGLA Associates and Scott Street from Windsor Bell Homes is also here tonight in case questions come up. Um, so, unless you have questions for me right off the bat. Um, I don't have any. Do y'all have any left? I'm just real concerned about the traffic on that road. You have the dollar for you to back up, back up somewhere to know the middle east can you. Yeah, and I can uh, perhaps the Mike will to come speak because they would have been dealing with DOT on the access points off and the, the number of lots I don't think triggered anything of substance uh, as far as DOT was concerned on it. We do, you know, as, as was the case with the review the previous two times it was here, obviously the main major concerns lie on Rutledge Road. Um, you know, we're not in control of any kind of improvement plans for Rutledge Road. We know the state of DOT project after DOT project getting pulled from the, you know, the transportation improvement lists due to funding concerns. Um, so there, there's not a lot that can be done on that. I can invite Will to come speak to, to the DOT uh, interactions that they had today. So, uh, thank you, Rick. Good evening, Mr. Chair, members of the planning board. I'm Will Dewey with WGLA Engineering. Uh, before I answer the question about traffic, just a couple of quick facts and figures in a bigger map. This may be a little bit easier to see. Uh, again, you can see the, the area that's being added. That's about 0.55, uh, 5,500 hundredths of an acre, a little over a half an acre, which would take the total acreage in the subdivision to just over 31 acres total with 93 lots, as Eric had mentioned. Um, you can see the lots that are proposed along here with the kind of tannish green being more of the open space. And the open space of the 31 acres, give or take, is about 10.48 acres is proposed. Just to give you a feel for this, the requirements for open space with a project like this based on the number of units would be about an acre and a half. So the amount of open space is significantly beyond what would originally be required. To, to your question about DOT and the, and the driveway and the road at Rutledge Road, we were required to go to DOT and get an NCDOT driveway permit, so we interfaced with the folks in Mills River. Uh, Lonnie Watkins is the division engineer, or district engineer, excuse me. His office reviewed our engineering plans, looked at not just phase one, which is to here, but the overall project, assessed what was there, and required some uh, 
some basically stop sign, making sure we have clear view at the drive entrance, that we've got safe turn movements and the like. They did not require a traffic study. It was below the threshold of a traffic study requirement. They didn't require any turning lanes based on the number of, of units. So basically, DOT does an internal assessment if you're below a specific threshold. It's it certainly getting busy going through there, no doubt about it. And as, and as Eric said, I think the the thing that we hear, not just in Fletcher, but in all the communities we talk with, are the same thing. The DOT projects are continually being pushed back further and further. And I I really would encourage you to, to talk to your DOT board members, to talk to the local DOT folks and provide the priorities for the town. I know your town council has provided a number of priorities for, for DOT communities pushing them along. Joe, if I could interject one other thing too, it's, it's such that, you know, there's, we're, you know, being as small as town as we are, we're about six and a half square miles. Um, there's not a lot of large track acreage left. I mean, these subdivisions that you're seeing were in some of the two larger track um, sites available for development. And you'll remember that at one point, um, we were getting asked to rezone this by a different entity to uh, put in high density uh, multifamily residential there. And both planning board and council held the line and kept the zoning as it currently was zoned for single family. Um, and it's just a product of, I think, you know, we always recognize that there could be a subdivision like this and the one next door on, so it was already zoned for a development like this, and it's just, I say, there's no way to really prevent any and all development. Um, we've always seen, you know, DOT has a poor history of keeping up with road improvements um, until they're bursting over capacity, but um, we haven't even seen them repave our section of road. I'm sure the Fletcher and everybody involved here are all about it. We can get 156 homes there. People have to go to work in the morning, come over here, yeah. can't get out. Yeah. You wait a long time now with no traffic. You wait a long time for people to see in the airport. Right. Every 10 to 12 cars deep every time, any time of day. Yeah, I, feel, I feel frequent calls just in general about Rutgers Road, and again, because with all the DOT maintained roads, I end up having to refer them to the local DOT office. Absolutely, you did. Yes, yes sir. This is, you said there wasn't any problem, but we could have had a problem with 156,000 here. You're right. All right. You glad to answer any other questions, Mr. Chair? If anyone has any. Yeah. Any questions? Um, comment? Yeah. Sure. Sorry I missed last slide. <laughs> but um, usually when a person uses the term rubber stamp something, it's kind of in a derogatory fashion, but if there were ever a case for rubber stamping, I don't see any reason for any further discussion on this one. Right, there we go. It's, uh, even the issue about the roads is beyond yeah, all. That's, that's not what it's got. Yeah. Nothing to do with the tail. I, I, I agree with Joe, but we're going to see problems with that. That's not a big part. part. Well, yeah. 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 But yeah, um, there has uh, been discussion in the past about not being able to do these things at staff level, but the way that the ordinance is written, that we have to do it this way. So it's uh, a little inconvenient, but I would prefer to have this ability to scrutinize in the future instead of staff level when we find out after the fact. So uh, that's one of the advantages. Any other questions or comments? If not, I guess we would take it to a vote. Do y'all have anything to add, sir? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. All right. Um, do I have a motion that we approve these revisions to the preliminary plan for Windsorville Homes? It's been moved. Is there a second? Second. It's been moved and second. Is there any other discussion? If not, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Motion carries. I want to thank you guys for coming out for three houses and doing the hoop you have to jump through, but we do appreciate you and we look forward to seeing some good quality homes. There's so much going on now with the housing market. It's, 
It's a gamble. It's Las Vegas. I was trying to think of it. Good luck. Thank you. Good luck to you all. Thank you. Thank you so much. Next item on the agenda is staff updates and potential cleaning item. And uh, once again, I recognize our group. Um, I don't have anything really much else to add tonight. There's, as, as I keep mentioning, the last few months in a row, there are a couple of items that I feel like are hanging out there, potentially getting ready to be submitted, that I keep being surprised by them missing the deadline. So I don't know if there's a couple of, you know, I, I often joke, you, you often get. 20 or 30 inquiries about a particular piece of property before you actually end up with a solid development proposal come to fruition. So there's a couple of things that I wouldn't be surprised to turn up, but I'll just keep in touch via email. So this is a Hoover's Creek uh, parcel there. That, you know, and that, and that commercial corner there. Yeah, there's um, big Charlie's on the green. That that's one of them that I'm, I'm less in, inclined to think where we have anything imminent coming, but I, I yeah, noticed. You know, I live right around the corner. Yeah. They're working there. They have, yeah. There is a there is a tenant going in that location. And for uh, anybody who doesn't know, we're talking about the intersection, the old commercial building, the intersection of Cooper's Creek Road, Souther, and Burning Mountain Royal comes together. The old historic looking building where the grocery store once was. Um, there, Black Bear Coffee is getting ready to be a tenant in the area and a half that they're working on. And the owner of that property has discussed on numerous occasions various ideas he's got for the other part of the property. And, you know, he's, he's talked about wanting to do additional development behind it, um, talked about, you know, this or that as far as with going for a conditional zoning to kind of expand the range of uses. Right now it's basically grandfathered as either retail or restaurant use. Um, so it, it's been a lot of idea discussion but uh, nothing has come So the tenant will not be occupying the whole property? As far as I know, the, the tenant was just taking up, I don't know if it was perfectly divided in half or not, I feel like that, well, that part might have been maybe two thirds the size of the building. Yeah, a new addition has been added yeah. on. So that was I, I do know the restaurant half was vacated and I'm confused as to the ownership of that. I know it was on the market and getting ready to transfer ownership possibly to the gentleman that owns what's been it's a lot of speculation, and it's like I've kind of that one's less on the radar. There was a couple other more pertinent ones that were, were like two more timely ones, and I thought were coming quicker, but, but hasn't, hasn't materialized. So I've learned to quit, uh, quit, quit guessing too. Um, and I'll just I'll keep in touch as always via email. On you know once we you know get round out the end of the month for uh, some middle deadline for September. Any, any questions, comments? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, you feel free. Yeah. yeah. Would y'all like to like to speak, or but there's opportunity to talk if y'all have anything on the We got plenty of time. <laughs> We've been 12 minutes in this. You say hi. Thank you. Uh, I have a question. The rentals back here where the tomato patch is, what did they come with it? Well, as we know, they had sought a lengthy extension at the outbreak of the pandemic and then, you know, subsequently had another extension approved by council. Um, you know, they had, uh, they were dealing with pricing, supply chain, blah, 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 wetlands with the Army Corps. Um, the, the number of units that had been approved of, um, has shrunk a little bit based on some, some of the linear wetland issues back there. But it's still like, oh yes, they have not abandoned the project. They have expressed to council um, at whatever month that was where they got the extension. I think that was back in the spring. Um, and I think they have till something like the middle of 2024 to significant infrastructure over there. So they, at the time, and again, I, I'll say, I believe it when I see it, but they expressed the possibility that we might see some infrastructure starting over there in the fall or winter. But we'll see how it goes yeah. with everything going on. All right. Thank you. Any other questions? Comments? <laughs> if you 
Don't let me tell this. Leave me journal.